Hi, my name is Ryan Farrar, the Senior Director of Baseball Gloves at Rawlings Sporting Goods, and today we're going to talk about do's and don'ts and some tips on breaking in a glove. There's a lot of different things people have probably mentioned or you've read on the internet how to break in a glove. But the first and foremost important thing is remember that it is your glove and you need to break it in the best way that fits your game. The first step of that is knowing how you want your glove to break in. There's a lot of different positions on the baseball field and there's a lot of different players that play those positions differently. Uh, there's outfield for example, you may close your glove more pinky to thumb or if you're playing infield you may take your fingers to your palm depending on the pattern you have purchased or how you want your glove. The key for breaking in a glove is, is the padding and it's important that because the more the glove is used the padding will break down and which will create the, the broken in feel or as it gets softer. Uh, there's a couple tools of the trade that we use. First and foremost playing catch and or a baseball is always good. Uh, it's always nice to have a little glove oil with you and or if you have one a glove mallet uh, will help you break down the padding as well. So what, what I like to do and what we recommend is always just starting out playing a little catch and once you determine how you want your new glove to break in then you can begin to focus on the fingers, the heel, the thumb. There's some players that will like straight fingers. There's some players that will like their fingers rolled. Some people want their thumb out. Some people will want their thumb in to create more of a narrow pattern. So once you've figured out how you want it broken in, then you can begin breaking it in. After your first round of catch, uh, you can begin to apply a little glove oil, but it's important that you don't spray the glove oil directly on the glove because you'll see you'll get a nice dark spot which you don't want on your glove. So it's important to take your rag, lightly apply some oil to that, and begin to apply it throughout the glove. Very evenly and smooth and not to use too much. Leather is a porous material so it's good to put a little moisture back into it and what this does is it softens up the leather a bit and allows you to work it. But you make sure you pay attention, make sure you get it around all the laces, the fingertips, in between the fingers, otherwise you'll have an uneven oiled glove which could cause it to break in differently at different spots. Once you have the glove oiled, you begin to work it with your hands a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, rolling the fingers or throwing out the thumbs uh, is, allows you to start closing the glove a little bit better. If you do have a mallet and after you've oiled your glove, Begin to focus on the heel. The heel is where your restriction points are based on the heel padding. So you can take, take the glove and simply pound it on that heel pad, which will begin to loosen it up. If you want your glove to close finger to thumb, then you would take this and work that middle crease a little bit and pound that. Or if you simply just want to focus on the pocket, you take the mallet like this and pound that pocket to break in where you'll be catching the ball, which will expedite the break-in process. When you think you've got your glove where you want it, we recommend going back outside, playing catch, determine if you need to continue that process over again. It will take a little time, uh, but if you do it right, uh, you'll be very happy with the purchase of your glove and how you've broken it in and use it for many years.